Got life or death, better choose it. Got wisdom on your side, don't lose it. My spirit in check, I rule it. If you got a high head, better cool it. In my lane, in my lane, better move it. For I need my 13, lose it. On the way to the kingdom, we cruising. Don't no one do what we doing. See, I'm three times better when I'm flipping through the script. Pressure bus pipe, G ain't nothing but a drip. Gas flow moving, say hello to the chief. And if he just gonna get it, man, somebody get a brief. I'm 30 days in, past up where you work. Your kids breaking laws and they do it for a turf. And you steady trying to sell a soul for some merch while your wife fake you healing on the ground for a purse. When I got these scripts, man, I can't miss. See, a lot of y'all try, but you ain't this. And I'm eating up lies, take them to the bank with. If you ain't selling time, show them what a bank with. Hey, how y'all doing today? Y'all want to come up and learn your history? Y'all come up and learn your history, according to the Bible. Let me ask you a question. How y'all doing today? What's your nationality? Yeah, what's your nationality? Do you know it? What race of people are y'all? Do you consider yourselves? She, she said African-American. Okay, what do you say? Is, are those your children? Okay, so uh, what is your nationality? What would be their nationality? She said African-American. Pretty much the same thing? Yep. What does African American mean, sis, that's walking by with a baby? Bring it out! What does African American mean? No. Yeah, you. Do you know? Do you know what African American means? No. The word Africa comes from a so-called white man named Leo Scipio Africanus. That's right. That's right. Once he went over there to that land, he took it over and named it after himself. Right. Bring it out! Then America was named after another so-called white man named Amerigo Vespucci. When he came over here with Christopher Columbus, he named this land after himself. Bring it out! So when you say, or when our people say we are African American, we are saying we come from the seed of two white men. Is right. that true? Teacher! Did you come from the se seed of two white men? Yeah. What about you over there, ma'am? Did you come from the seed of two white men? What about y'all over there? So who are you according to the Bible? What is your true nationality if you're not an African American? What would you consider yourself? Bring it out! She said Islam. You know the one up? Uh, uh, Islam. Uh, back up to, no, the to 26 and 1. She said Islam. What is the origin of Islam? Do you know? You don't know. So you were just throwing it out there basically. She said, I guess. She said, I guess. Okay, so in the religious faith of Islam, right, did you know that before they started serving one God, they had a God that they served every day of the year? Bring it out. Did you know that? So you knew that, right? So uh, people like Elijah Muhammad, or what's his name? Uh, the Pro Prophet Muhammad, right? Yeah. Was Muhammad a prophet? Yeah. You know, they said yes. So, so uh, Prophet Muhammad, Elijah, he was a prophet? Okay, watch this. Let's see that. Amos 2 and 11. Have you, what nation was uh, Muhammad from? He was Islam, correct? Okay, watch this. Have you ever heard of the children of Israel? Yeah. Okay, let's see. Read out. The book of Amos, chapter 2, verse 11. Bring it out. And I raised up your sons for prophets, and of your young men for Nazarites. Is it not even thus, O ye children of Israel? Awesome. Children of who? Children of so according to the Bible, the only people that can be prophets are the children of Israel. Right. It's not Islam. Because you got to think, Exodus 20 and 2, Exodus 20 and 3, uh, don't bow down to other. When the Most High said he came with the Ten Commandments, right? He said, don't worship no other God but him. Right. When you look at a person in Islam, right, what do they do when they go to the uh, land of Mecca? What do they do? They walk around the little stone, they get down on their knees and they kiss it. They worship that, right? What does the Bible say about that, though? Read. The book of Exodus, chapter 20, verse 3. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. So the Bible said you shall have no other gods before him, right? So if the Bible is saying that, when well, you get a person from Islam that go to the land of Mecca and they're bowing down to that, that stone and they're kissing it, that's their God that they're praying to. God said we're not supposed to do that. Read that, Leviticus. This is the book of Leviticus, chapter 26, verse 1. Bring it out. Ye shall make you no idols, nor graven image, neither rear you up a standing image, neither shall ye set up any image of stone. Of what? Of stone.
stone, no image of stone. When you go to Mecca, they walk around that Kaaba stone and they worship it. The yeah. Bible says you shouldn't set up any image of stone in your land. In your land, read. To bow down unto it, for I am the Lord your God. So according to the Bible, when them people that say they from Islam, or when our people say they Islam or they Muslims, when you go over there and they do that hajj around that Kaaba stone, the Bible said you ain't supposed to be doing that. That's right. You breaking the laws of God by doing that. That's right. Because as the children of Israel, you're not supposed to be doing that. That's right. So now, what is your nationality? Yeah. Bring it out. So let's see. So if you was to fill out a job application, you would put under race what? For, for far as you know, you would put so-called black or African American, right? Let's see. So we already broke down what that means, correct? Watch this. Hebrews 7 to 14. No. Jeremiah 14 and 2. Let's get that. What color, what color are the Jews today? Bring it out. You don't have no idea. So have you ever heard of the Jewish people? The Jewish people, the white people that walk around with the hats on their head, the top hats Bring with the little curls. So are they the true people of God? Are they the real Jews? Because that's what America calls them. So she says she don't think so, right? So watch this. Because in order to know about the Jews, you have to read the Bible on where the Jews are mentioned. Right. Read this. This is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 14, verse 2. Bring it out. Judah mourneth. And the gates thereof languish. So the Bible said Judah is in mourning. When you look at this sign right here, Judah, right here, I don't want to step on the sign. When you read this sign right here, it said Judah today, right? Or the so called black Americans, African Americans. So it said Judah is in mourning. Why are we in mourning? Because we the last hide in the first fire. Well, that's right. We have low income housing. We have abortion clinics in our neighborhood. Right. We are the only people that live in a block with nothing good around here, but we got eight or nine churches on the same block and ain't nothing changed in our hood. Bring it out. That's why we're in mourning. We have single parent households. The father ain't in the house, and nowadays the mother ain't in the house. That's, that's a plague amongst our people. That's why our people are in mourning. Read. Judah mourneth, and the gates thereof languish. What does a gate do, sis? A gate in your house. It's in front of your house. What is a gate supposed to do? It opens. What is it supposed to keep out? Bring it up. Say it again. Trespasses. It's supposed to keep out danger, right? What leader do we have today that's supposed to be uplifting our people in order to keep their lives out of danger? Who? What people do we have? We don't have any. It's supposed to be the pastors, but the pastor today, they only line in your pockets. They just want your money. Right. It's supposed to be them. So who do we turn to when we don't have pastors? Who do we turn to when we don't have our fathers and our mothers in the house? We turn to gang members. We turn to drug dealers. We turn to pimps, hustlers, and hoes. That's up. what we turn to. Nowadays, our people turn to movie stars. They turn to entertainers. You got our young sisters out here trying to be like Nicki Minaj and Meg Thee Stallion. You got our men trying to be like Lil Uzi Vert, Lil Wayne, and all them. Wake them up! Why ain't none of them trying to be the prophets of the Bible? That's right. Ain't none of them trying to be like Jesus Christ. Right. But that's what we need to come back to and let, and let our people understand who we are according to the Bible. Teach up. Read. They are black. What color are the Jews? They are black unto the ground. Genesis 2 and 7. So the Bible said the real Jews are black that's people. Right. Have you ever heard that in your Christian church? All praise. Somebody clap it up for that sister. She said she don't go to church. All praises. Because Christianity is not in the Bible. That's right. That's white supremacy. Christianity right. is white supremacy. Right. It is nowhere in the Bible. Right. So that's a good thing you don't go to church because they're not going to teach you nothing. You go to church on Sunday, he give you a nice clap and a shout. He gets your money and you leave home and don't know what the hell the pastor said the whole day. Right. Because it's just a feel-good show. That's right. He say, come as you are and stay as you are. But when you come to the Bible, you can't come as you are and you definitely can't stay as you are. That's, That's right. right. You have to change. Right. You understand that? But in order for you to change, you have to know who you are first. Our people don't even know who we are. So in order for us to change, we have to know who we are first. That's what we're teaching you. The real Jews are black. The tribe of Judah are a black people. This whole nation right here, from Judah all the way down to Nephtali, are so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. That's, right. That's who the children of Israel today are. Have y'all ever heard that? Hey, bro. Hey, bro, with a white shirt. 
Have you ever heard that the real the, the real children of God were blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans? Have you ever heard that? Have you heard it? What about you, sis? Have you heard that with the pink shirt? Have y'all heard that y'all are the children of God? Have you ever heard that y'all are the children of God? So, who are the children of God then? Deuteronomy 7 and 6. Who are the children of God? Because you can have a so-called white man walk by here right now. He'll say he's the children of God. You got Chinese people that say they children of God. But who's telling the truth? Let's see what the Bible says who the children of God is. Bring it out. Read. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 7, verse 6. Bring it out. For thou art an holy people. So there's chosen people. And listen up, brothers. Chosen people that God is talking to. He said y'all are a holy people. Read. Unto the Lord thy God. Read. The Lord thy God have chosen thee. So the God that created heaven and earth, he said he chose a specific group of people that are his chosen and his holy. Read. To be a special people. To be a what? A special people. I know that sounds funny to our people because we used to be called hoes and bees. That's what we used to be called thugs and niggas. That's what we used to be called. But the Bible said you are a special people unto himself. That's right. Read. Above all people. No, we are equal. Above all people. So, so far, this people that Moses is talking about, they're chosen, they're holy unto the Lord himself, and they are above all people. Hmm. That sounds funny. That don't sound like equality to me, but let's keep reading. They're upon the face of the earth. Upon the face of the earth. Let's see who these people are. Deuteronomy 1 and 1. Let's see who these chosen people are that God only cares about. Bring it out. Because God don't care about everybody in the world. Right. Who are who out here think God care about everybody in the world? Who think that? That's what she think. Let's see. Read that. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 1, verse 1. Bring it out. These be the words which Moses spake unto all Israel. Oh, uh, who? All Israel. The Bible says those words that God said are his chosen, his holy, unto himself and a special people above everybody else. He said those are the children of Israel. The children of Israel today make up the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. That's right. Not everybody on the face of the planet. Let me get 2nd Ezra chapter 6, verse 54. Because they said, which is fine, we're not getting on y'all. A lot of our people thought God cared about everybody on the world. Right. A lot of our people thought Jesus Christ died for everybody on the earth. Right. But that's not the case when you read the Bible. Teach. It's not. Let's watch this. Read. This is the book of 2nd Ezra, chapter 6, verse 54. Bring it out. And after these, Adam also, whom thou madest Lord of all thy creatures. So y'all know about Adam, right? The first man that was ever created, everybody know about Adam, right? Right? So it said, Adam was made Lord of all the creatures because he was made first. Y'all got that. Watch this. Read. Of him come we all. So all of us come from Adam because the man carries the seed. So everybody on the earth comes from Adam. That's right. post flood and that's after. Read. And the people also whom God has chosen. So hold on. So hold on. So the Bible says everybody comes from Adam and the people who God chose. We read in Deuteronomy that the people that God chose were the children of Israel. That's right. Which today make up, I gotta keep saying it, the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Bring it out. Let's keep reading. Read. Hey, look, Verse 55. All this have I spoken before thee, O Lord, because thou madest the world for our sakes. The world, the sun, the moon, and the stars was made for the children of Israel, which is our people. That's right. right. Not everybody on the face of the earth. But let's keep reading to see about about everybody else. Read. Verse 56. As for the other people, as for the other people that's in the world, which also come of Adam, which also came out of Adam, who are not the chosen, thou hast said, what did God say? That they are nothing. What did God say? That they are nothing. So God says those other nations outside of the children of Israel are nothing to him. That's not equality. So yes, it is a people that God loves, and there's a whole other bunch of people that God hates. Let's bring it out. Let, let's read. But be like unto spittle. What is spittle? What is spittle, sis? 
spittle, like spit. God said the other nations to him, they're like spit to him. Read. And has likened the abundance of them unto a drop that falleth from a vessel. You ever been in your house like, you know, you're cleaning up the house. you about to mop the floor. You got a bucket full of water. If a little bit drop out, do you worry about that little bit? You don't. God said that's how he feel about the other nations. Right. They're nothing to him. Now, did we make that up or did we just read it? That's God's word. That's, right. that's God's word. We didn't make that up. Another thing, Revelation 1. I said earlier that Christianity is a form and it breeds white supremacy. I'm going to explain how. Hey, you little, I asked them a question, the little kids. Hey, y'all little kids, I want y'all to, I want y'all, I'm going to ask y'all a question. Who is this? Who is this? Y'all can come over if y'all want to. Who is this? My battle. Who is this right here? Who is that? God. She, he said God. Who is this, sis? She said God. What you say, little man? He said God. What you say? God. Can he talk? I don't know if he can talk. You know who this is? You know? He don't know, so. You know who that is? He said God, so all of them said that's God. That's what they said, right? Give me Revelation chapter 1, verse 14. Bring it out. Bring it out. Does the Bible say Jesus, first of all, this is, they said, that y'all said God. We're talking about Jesus Christ. And then we're going to get to his father, God. Does the Bible say that Jesus Christ or God, does it say he's white? No. Then why did you say he's white? It's not to get on you. You see what I'm saying, sis? They immediately said he was white because due to the propaganda of the earth, that's what they've been taught. But let's see what the Bible says he looks like. Is that, is that fair? If you had a book about yourself, right? Say you grew up and somebody did an autobiography about you, you would want everything in that book to be true, correct? Let's see. Read. This is the book of Revelations, chapter 1, verse 14. Bring it out. This is the book of Revelations, chapter 1, verse 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ. So I know y'all kind of young. I don't know about you. But the word revelation, the root word, it means to reveal. If you're revealing something to somebody, what are you doing? She said, you're right. You're showing it to them, right? So you're showing somebody something. Read. Of who? The, re uh, the revelation of who? The revelation of Jesus Christ. So we're about to do the showing of who? Of Jesus Christ, right? Watch this. 14. Verse 14. His head and his hairs were white like wool. So first question. Y'all ever watch baseball? Three strikes you out. You watch baseball? So watch this. The Bible said his what? His head and his hairs were white like wool. So now I got a question. It said Jesus Christ's head and his hairs, which is his beard, was white like wool. I got a question. What color is his hair? It's brown. Black. What about his beard? Black? Okay, well, he, he said black, brown. What color is his beard? Black. It says black, kind of like a brown, right? But the Bible said it's white and woolly. So which one of these pictures got white and woolly hair? This one in the middle. Which one? Yep. That one? That's still the same person. Look over there. What does he have? Over there. Look at that. Does he have white and woolly hair? Yeah. Yes. But he doesn't, right? All of these, None of these pictures have white and woolly hair, right? Okay. So that's not God? Let's see. Let's see. Read. His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow. So who hair is white as snow? Looking at the colored pictures. He's over there, right? Huh. Okay. Read. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. Yep. Who has red eyes? So it's not him? No, it's not him. It's not him? Huh. Read Let's keep reading. Verse 15. And his feet like unto fine brass. What color is brass? Do you know? You ever seen a penny? A penny is brass. What color is a penny? It's kind of brownish and brown. Kind of brownish, right? So, the penny is brown. Like, brass is brown, right? Read. As if they burn in a furnace. If you burn anything in an oven, or another word is a furnace, what color would it come out? Black. Black. So, according to the Bible, what color is Jesus Christ? 
He's a he's a brown skinned man. That's right. Jesus Christ, according to the Bible, is a black man. He looked like right. he looked like all of y'all standing up here right now. Right. That's right. That's who he looked like. That's who he looks like. Give me Daniel, give me Daniel seven. Give me Daniel seven. So Jesus Christ. So which one is Jesus Christ after what we just read? Yeah. All praise to the Most High. It's a black man according to the Bible. That's right. Which one is Jesus? Don't tell her. Y'all don't tell her. Which one is Jesus? She said, which one? Point it again. Which one is Jesus? Okay. I want you to stay right here, sis. I want you to listen. Back to Revelation. Let's get it. So, let's see which one. I know y'all know. Don't tell her. Let's let her figure it out on herself. You listen to sis? Y'all listen. Both of y'all listen. What, what color is Jesus? She said black. Can you prove it? Yeah, can you prove it? She said he she said any white, so that means she's white. Okay, let's read. This is the book of Revelation, chapter 1, verse 14. His head and his hairs were white like wool. So it said Jesus Christ's head and his hair were white like wool. Let me ask you a question. Is his head white and woolly? Is, which one hair is white and woolly? No, that's just the drawing. Look at both these pictures. Who hair is white and woolly? You know what wool is? Do you know what wool hair is? Touch your hair. That's wool. Bring it out. That's right. That's right. That's wool. So so far, you got the hair. All of y'all have the hair of Jesus Christ. That's, right. Right. that's first of all. Read. His head and his hairs were white like wool, Read. as white as snow. Whose hair is white as snow? Between this picture and that one. With this one and this. One. Between this, this these pictures and that one. Who hair is white as snow? That one. Okay. Read. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. Which one is, who got red eyes? Okay, she pointed at her. Do you agree, sis? Y'all sisters? No, that's my cousin. Your cousin. Do you agree with her? He has red eyes? Yeah. So he don't got red eyes. This one don't got red eyes? No. The one you pointed to don't got red eyes? Okay, read. And his feet like unto fine brass. So y'all feet, everybody out here, your feet is the same color as the rest of your body, correct? Yeah. It may be a little lighter because we wear shoes, but it'll be the same color, right? So it said Jesus Christ's feet was like the color of brass. I asked them earlier, what color is brass? What color is brass? I answer your question in a second. What color is brass? What you know the color of a penny? What's the color of a penny? Brown. Brown, right? Read. And his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burn in a furnace. So if you burn anything in a furnace or an oven, if you burn it, what color does it come out? Black. So according to the Bible, what color is Jesus Christ? Black. 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 So, who is this? Did y'all see that? Y'all nope. see the hypnosis of our people? That's what TV has done to our people. That's right. The Bible just said, Jesus Christ don't look nothing like this. He looks like that over there. Jesus Christ looks like everybody that's standing up here right now. That's right. right. You got this, sis? Revelations 1, 14 to 15 is what Jesus Christ looks like. So none of y'all should walk around here saying Jesus is white no more. What's your question, sis? Um, if this, if this don't, if this not Jesus no more, how did he turn black? Uh. She said, if this ain't Jesus no more, how did he turn black? The question is, Jesus was always a man of color. He was That's always right. black. That's Right. Your question should be, well, if he was black, how did he get white? Yeah, that's Let's see. That's what, you that's what she meant. So the, the, the little sister asked a good question. She said, if Jesus, basically what she was trying to say is, if Jesus is black, how did he get white? Let's see. Bring it out. This is the book of 1 Maccabees, chapter 3, verse 48. And notice, we're reading out of the Bible. Anything you want to know about Jesus or God or the prophets, you have to go to the Bible. That's right. If you're doing algebra, you have to go to a what? A math book. If you want to learn something about the earth, you have to go to a what? A science book. So if we're learning about Jesus and God and who his people are, all praise. Read. This is the book of First Maccabees, chapter 3, verse 48. Bring it out! And laid open the book of the law. So the Bible is the Bible. Another term for it is the book of the law, because it's a book of law, statute, and commandments that God gave to only us. That's right! Read. Wherein the heathen had sought to paint the likeness of their images. So a heathen 
a heathen, another word for a heathen, is a person outside of the children of Israel. That's right. right. So blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans are the children of Israel. That's right. So it said the heathen, like the so-called white man, he took his image and painted it to painted Christ to make Christ look like him. That's what the Bible says he did. Read, let's read it again. First Maccabees chapter 3, verse 48. Watch this. And laid open the book of the law, wherein the heathen had sought to paint the likeness of their images. So if Jesus was a black man, the heathen, the people that hated Christ and his people, he painted Christ to look like him. That's right. That's why he's a so-called white man now. But let's see what Christ, we already seen what Christ looks like, right? You got another question? Yeah, because when I went to church, they, uh -huh. said, they said Jesus made a person, a person You said what? It's a boy, I went to church, and we learned about his name, Adam. His name is Adam? So what, what you want to know what Adam looks like? Let's get Adam. Uh, Genesis 2 and 7. Bring it up! So the sister says she wants to know what Adam looks like, which is the first man that was ever created. What does Adam look like? You know? You know about Adam and Eve? You know about Adam? What you know what color Adam is? I, mean, I, know. I think I heard that name, but I don't know. A black man. Did you say what? You heard he was a white man, right? Let's see. This is the book of Genesis, chapter 2, verse 7. Bring it out! And the Lord God for man of the dust of the ground. I want y'all to look down. What color is the dust of the ground? Right there in the officer's hand. Look at his hand. What color is the dust of the ground? Black. Black. God said he made it. He made the first man from the dust of the ground. So Adam was a black man. Adam was a black man. He was not white. The lady in church was... The lady in church told you he was white. But according to the Bible, it said Adam and Christ are black men. That's right. So it's no disrespect, but she lying to you. Let's get another one. Y'all ever heard about Solomon? No, let's get God. Daniel 79. Let's get God. So she said earlier, God was white. Who thinks God is white? Exactly. Haters painted his... Haters painted his image another color. Right. Haters painted his image. But let's see what color God is. Because God is whose father? Our. Jesus' father. He's our father too, but he's Jesus' father. We explain and we approve that Jesus was black, right? So let's see what his father looked like. Read. This is the book of Daniel, chapter 7, verse 9. Bring it out. I beheld till the thrones were cast down, mm -hmm. and the Ancient of Days did sit. The Ancient of Days is God, because he has no beginning and he has no end. So the Ancient Days is another name for God. Yes, everybody, right. everybody got that, right? Yeah. Watch this. Read. Whose garment was white as snow. So God had on a long garment from his head down to his foot. Right? A garment is... Don't nobody got one. It's wore like apparel that the men of the Bible used to wear back in the day. It's not a dress. It's not a dress. Mm, kind of like a long trench coat, kind of, a little bit. No, nah, not like that. Not like that. I wish we had a picture. Read. And the hair of his head. And the hair of whose head? Oh, so the hair of God's head. Watch this. Like the pure wool. So, touch your hair. You come on up, bro. So, God has hair like... Who right here? Every last one of y'all. Right? Read. His, his throne was like the fiery flame and his wheels as burning fire. So who on the earth has woolly hair? Bring it out. Black people. So what color is God? Black. That's right. God is black according to the Bible. Right, right. So y'all should not y'all should not leave here and say Christ and God are white people. That's not what the Bible says. That's right. You got a question, bro? Yeah, go ahead. You good? What's your nationality? Oh, my bad. Hey, I got you. I got you. We're going to get to you in a minute. Uh, oh, you went to Chronicles too? Oh, okay, I'll praise. I'll praise. Read that. This is the book of Songs of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 5. Bring it up. The reason why I'm getting these scriptures is because for a long time, everybody thought the Bible was written by white people. But it's not. Moses writ wrote some of the Bible. We're going to prove what color he was. Go ahead, sis. They all, all of them, all of them are black. That's right. All of them are black. Read. 
This is the book of Song of Solomon. So Solomon was the wisest king that ever lived. He wrote some books in the Bible too. Let's see what color he was. Chapter 1, verse 5. I am black. Color Solomon? Solomon says I'm black but calmly. Calmly means beautiful. Don't our people say we black and beautiful? Because that's who we are according to the Bible. That's right. Let me get Moses. Let me get Job 30 and 30 and then Moses. So we, we just getting more people out of the book who wrote the Bible, uh, inspired by God, of course, who are black people. That's right. right. The Bible was not written by white folks. Never have, never will. Got me? Read. Job chapter 30, verse 30. Bring it out. My skin is black. What did Job say? My skin is black upon me. So what color is Job? Black. Job is black. That's right. another person who wrote a book in the Bible. That's right. Let's get some more people. Y'all heard of Moses? Have y'all heard of Moses? Yeah. The one that split the Red Sea, right? What color was Moses? Black. So let's prove it. Read. This is the book of Exodus, chapter 4, verse 6. Bring it out. And the Lord said furthermore unto him, put now thy hand into thy bosom. So the Most High told Moses, you got a coat on, right? He said, put your hand in your bosom, like in your coat. Read. And he put it, and he put his hand into his bosom. So he put his hand in his jacket, his bosom, right? Read. And when he took it out, behold, his hand was leprous as snow. So leprous means white. So his hand, his, when he took it out, his hand was white as snow. Read. And he said, put thy hand into thy bosom again. So God told Moses, now put your hand back into your coat, your bosom. Read. And he put his hand into his bosom again mm -hmm. and plucked it out of his bosom. And behold, it was turned again as his other flesh. So if Moses put his hand in his bosom, took it out, it was white. He put it back in there. God said, take it back out. He took it back out. It went back to his other flesh. What was Moses to begin with? He was a black man. That's right. So if every, every prophet in the Bible that wrote these books, inspired by God, were men of color. That's they right. were black men. That's who they were. Even the angels was black. That's according to the Bible. So y'all right now are the children of Israel is That's what we're teaching right. you. That's right. You're not African Americans. Your, your nationality is not black. You are from the tribe, uh, I guess she said y'all are so-called African Americans. So all of y'all will be from the tribe of Judah. That's right. In the Hebrew 7. So all of y'all are from the tribe of Judah. Y'all are the children of Israel, the chosen people of God. That's right. Now, who else is from the tribe of Judah? Do y'all know? Let's see. I want y'all to pay attention to this. Watch this, bro. Little man, pay attention. You're from the tribe of Judah. Let's see who else is from the tribe of Judah. Read. This is the book of Hebrews, chapter 7, verse 14. Bring it out. For, e for it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah. Our Lord sprang out of, our, out of Judah. Who is our Lord and Savior? Jesus. Jesus is a what according to the Bible? What color is he? That we read earlier. He's a black man. So if Jesus is a black man, y'all and y'all are from the tribe of Judah just like him, y'all come from the same tribe as Jesus the Christ. Yes, the same blood that's running in your veins is the same blood that was in his veins. So you're not African American. You tell them, I'm the children of Israel from the tribe of Judah. That's the right. same tribe as Jesus the Christ. That's right. That's who y'all are. We are special people unto God himself. Let me get Amos 3. Amos 3 and 1. Let's see. You got any questions? So, because this is like, matter of fact, yeah, get that, get that. Because I heard you say something about the lady in the church, right? I'm going to ask you some questions about that. Read. Yes, sir. Amos chapter 3 verse 1. Bring it out. Hear this word that the Lord has spoken against you, O children of Israel. So y'all are the children of Israel from the tribe of Judah. That's right. So this is who God is talking to. Read. Against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying. The only people that God saved through the land of Egypt when he walked them through the Red Sea was the children of Israel. Those who Moses went and got. Read. You only. You, you what? You only. Only, so you children of Israel only have I known of all 
all the families of the earth. That's right. So God said he only knows the children of Israel. So if God only knows the children of Israel, which is who we are here today, does who, what about everybody else? Does he love everybody else? If he care about one, do you care about, if you care about one pair of shoes more than you care about another, do you love all of them types of shoes the same way equally? No, you don't. So God only cares about the children of Israel. That's right. So the question about that church you go to, when y'all go to that church, uh, do you, have you, have she ever, to, Deuteronomy 22, have she ever told you about your dress code? What about you, ma'am? Have have the pastors, well, she said she don't really go, but when you have went to church, have they said, ever said anything to you about how our women are supposed to be dressing? She have? What have they said? What she said? She said dresses and skirts. Okay, watch this. Read. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 22, verse 5. Bring it out. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. The reason why, the reason why I'm bringing this out is because this. What is a woman, what is, how would I put this? What shouldn't a man wear that women wear? You ever seen Young, he said bras, what else? You ever seen Young Thug? No. You know who Young Thug is? What do Young Thug be wearing? And what else? And what else? What did he wear on his last album cover? It was something that women wear. He wore a dress. He did, right? He wore skirts. The Bible said a man not supposed to wear that which pertain to a woman. Read the first part, also. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 22, verse 5. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. So if a man is not supposed to wear dresses, what is a woman not supposed to be wearing that pertains to a man? Say it again. She said boxes. Uh, when you go to McDonald's or something, right? Yeah. This is what Young Thug wore on his last album cover. That's a guy. He wore a dress. God said, man, ain't supposed to dress like that. That's right. Right? So if you go into a bathroom at McDonald's, right, how do you know which one to go to, sis? Let me ask him first. When you go into a bathroom, when you go into a store to use the bathroom, how do you know which one to use? When you look on the front, what does it say? Because it got men and women. So if it didn't say man and woman, how would you know which one to go to? Um, because the stall is going inside. Because the lady stall is in that door. Before that, before you even go in the bathroom, when you look at the sign on the door, if it didn't say men and women, what's the difference? Do you know? No. What about you, sis? What's the difference? How the people on the, um, the blue thing have like hair and then some of them have hair. So, okay, yeah, some of them do have hair. What else, what does the woman have on her door to the bathroom? That little figure, what does she have on? The color Some of them are pink. We're going to pull it up for you. This is the bathroom sign. Y'all step closer. Yeah. I, so which one is which? Well, how do you know which one is the boy? The man? Oh, the man is cutting straight like this. What does he have on? He has a t-shirt like this. It's like you having a t-shirt, right? And, and the girl has a dress on. She has a what? A dress. So the sister has a dress on. Right. So what are women supposed to be wearing? Women supposed to be wearing dresses. That's right. You go, officer. So women supposed to be wearing dresses. He said, where your dress at? Don't get, she, she just found that out. Right. So as a children of Israel, a daughter of Sarah, you're supposed to be wearing dresses. That's right. That's right. Because I'm going to help you out, sis. Give me uh, 1 Timothy 2 and 9. When our, how old are you? She's 13. I want you to pay attention to this, sis, because she's going to know. When our women or young girls these age wear tight stuff, what are they showing off, sis? What are they trying to show off? They're trying to show off their figure. Bring it out. Right? Because what's the first thing y'all do? Maybe not you. What's the first, sis? What, you, correct me if I'm wrong. When a woman put on pants, what's the first thing she do when she go to the mirror? Because she's trying to what? Draw attention to herself. Bring it out. Read that. This is the book of 1 Timothy, chapter 2, verse 9. Bring it out. In like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel. Modest apparel meaning you wearing clothes that doesn't draw sexual attention. You understand that? Am I right, sis? Say it again. I didn't hear you. 
Modest apparel for women is clothes that does not draw sexual attention. That's what modest apparel is. That's what our women and young girls are supposed to be wearing. Right. Because you are running to one of these no good Negroes around here, not even around here, in the world, period. Because if you get with a man that look at you for what you got on and for what you can bring to him, is that a man that want to marry you? It's not. Because he don't want you for you, he just wants you for you. You understand that? So you got to realize that. How do I stop that sexual attention? Read. This is the book of 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 9. In like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel with shame faces and sobriety. So shame face meaning, you see, how you doing bro? Y'all stop by, come back and listen. Shame face for a woman is, you're not a woman or a sister that's all up in a man's face all the time. Bring it out! When you see videos today, or you see girls in clubs, they all in men's faces, and no one ain't supposed to be doing that. Right. Sobriety, meaning you're supposed to be sober. You're not supposed to be walking around here drunk all day long. You're not supposed to be doing that as a daughter of God. Read. Hey, no boyfriend, girlfriend. And no boyfriends and girlfriends. Bring it out! That's nowhere in the Bible. That's nowhere in the Bible. Read that. Not with braided hair or gold or pearls or costly array. So you can have braids and stuff in your hair. That's not what it's saying. But when you run into yourself where you are dabbling in what you look like more than how you feel about God, that's when it's a sin. You understand that? Read. But which becometh women professing godliness. Professing what? Professing godliness. So as a daughter of God. You have to profess godliness. When you look at people like Nicki Minaj, Meg Thee Stallion, and all these, uh, Cardi B, is that godly apparel that they're wearing? That's Horace apparel. Bring it Our sisters don't need to be following the steps of those women. You need to be following the steps of godly women. So, we mentioned earlier that there was no boyfriend and girlfriends in the Bible. You ever heard of that? You got a boyfriend? She and, and watch this. I want, I want y'all to understand this. This is not to belittle you. You have no business having a boyfriend or talking to any boy at your age. That's right. No business. No business. Read that. This is the book of Leviticus, chapter 19, verse 29. Watch this, sis. Do not prostitute thy daughter. Read it again. Do not prostitute thy daughter. Now I'm going to explain this. Now, a lot of mothers will say, oh, I'm not prostituting my daughter. She, I'm not, I'm not putting her on the corner to get money. But it's a reason. What does, what does prostitution, prostitution mean? means when you're paying somebody for sex. That's what prostitution is. Now, the Bible says thou shalt not prostitute thy daughter, right? Let's say you're not, I'm, I'm not, I'm not selling my daughter. But when you tell your daughter, hey, live your life, go from, uh, uh, live your uh, YOLO when you only live once when you tell your daughter hey don't settle right now don't settle right now have fun and then find that right man later you're giving her the okay to sleep with Rod from this Rod to that Rod to that that's whoredom that's right you are prostituting your daughter by telling her just have fun you can have boyfriends until you find the right one you're telling her you can sleep with whoever you want to until you find that right one that you want to keep that's prostituting your daughter. Bring it out. Read. That's it on that? Mm -mm. Leviticus chapter 19, verse 29. Do not prostitute thy daughter to cause her to be a whore. To cause her to be a what? To cause her to be a whore. When you prostitute your daughter, you are causing her to be a whore. Is that what you want to be labeled? According to the Bible, if once you sleep with a man, right, that's supposed to be your husband. That's right. That's right. What? Huh? Before the truth? Hey, listen. Before the truth? Come here. Come here. I'll answer the question. I'll, I will answer it. Before, before I found out who I was, yes, I was in the midst of sin. Yes, I was. But once I found out who I was, I didn't sleep with nobody but my wife. That's the difference. 2 Corinthians 5 and 17. Bring it out, huh? Yes, sir? That's why I'm getting her right now. And listen, 
You're absolutely right, sir. You know why we talking to her? Because she's 13 with a boyfriend. Bring it up. Y'all old people out here, y'all older generation, is supposed to be doing something about this. That's right. I live 15 minutes down the street. How far have I gotten? I've been in this. I've been in this walk for six years. Just come, come over here if you got questions. You can come over here. Watch this. Read. Watch this, sis. Now, I don't want you to think we are hypocrites up here. I'm going to tell you what I said, what I said to him. Read. This is the book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 5, verse 17. Read up. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. He is a what? He is a new creature. So, yes, I was going to clubs. Yes, I was drinking. I didn't smoke. But, yes, I was doing a lot of other things and sin that I wasn't supposed to be doing. I was sleeping with different women. But when I came to the knowledge that I'm an Israelite from the tribe of Gad and I had to change my life, right. I did not do those things no more. Bring it out. To God, I was considered a new creature. Right. You understand that? Read. All things are passed away. So all the things that I used to do when I repented and came into the Bible, the Most High wiped those things clean. That's right. Read. That's it. Mm. Behold, all things are become new. All things are become what? Are become new. So once you repent of your sins, come into the fold, start following the law, statute, and commandments as the children of Israel, which y'all are, everything that you've done before that, the most high will forget about here. That's, right. That's right. That's why you can become a new creature. We used to scream black power while Haram was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road. Purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how we're men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.